recording okay, so we are to record it okay let us see how many students are there okay okay so today we will uh, we will start a new topic and that is the stereochemistry part the symmetry and point groups we will first um, discuss yeah okay so uh, symmetry or point group is very important and stereochemistry as a whole is very important for organic chemistry you have to know stereochemistry if you want to uh, learn organic chemistry there is no alternative and uh, the first thing which comes for the stereochemistry is the symmetry and point group you have to know about symmetry and point group to understand other uh, topics of this okay so here uh, so what is symmetry first of first question is what is symmetry so if you take a molecule and if you do some operation on the molecule you can rotate it you can take a reflection of the molecule and on doing so uh, if you get the similar or uh, yeah similar arrangement of the molecule then uh, we can say some symmetry element is present in the molecule let me show you with some example let's say we have this bf3 molecule okay i will mark these boron atoms as one two and three to understand now what you can do on this molecule to get um, similar kind of arrangement of the molecule but this f1 f2 f3 they will change their position but overall you will get a similar arrangement what you can do can you suggest me something that we can do on the molecule what is c3 operation i mean what i have to do so we are rotating the molecule by 120 degree and the axis the rotation axis is actually bisecting the molecule right it is going through the boron so if we do that what we will get we will get something like this so let's say we are doing this anti clockwise rotation then this f1 will come here f3 will come here and f2 will go there this is the arrangement right now although the f1 f2 they are changing their position but we are getting similar arrangement of the molecule so if we don't mark uh, fluorine as f1 f2 or f3 we cannot distinguish between this one and this one right and that's why we say uh, symmetry is present in the molecule now if you take some other molecule for example uh, b c l 2 f okay and if you do similar thing 120 degree rotation then what you will get you will get uh, cl cla okay so are these two same i mean are uh, these two are similar so i uh, that means 120 degree rotation here is not giving the similar arrangement right so this whatever c3 he has said this c3 i will uh, explain what is c3 so c3 is not present here now for different molecules different kind of symmetries are present and what is this c3 so uh, this particular symmetry operation what we are doing here is called principal axis of symmetry principal axis of symmetry right principal axis of symmetry and how we uh, we put them the name c1 c2 or c3 so here what we do is we uh, divide 360 degree by the angle uh, through which we are rotating the molecule here it is 120 degrees so we get a factor here three right so if we get this angle uh, we get this factor three then we will call it c3 similarly if we have any angle theta 
through which the molecule we are rotating and we are getting the similar arrangement of the molecule then we will divide that theta um, we, we will divide 360 by that, that theta and we will get some uh, some uh, integer n okay and then that axis will be called cn right so this is general representation this this can be c1 c2 c3 c4 anything okay so the rule is you have to rotate uh, a molecule uh, by a certain angle then you have to divide 360 degree by that angle you will get some value n then cn will be your uh, symmetry axis for example if you have a um, if you have a molecule let's say you have this um, uh, i can draw some arbitrary uh, uh, some hypothetical molecule like uh, x a b a sorry a a a so it is a planar molecule and all four atoms are there and if you rotate it by 90 degree you will get similar ar arrangement of the molecule right now here if we uh, divide 360 by 90 we will get four so here we will say that the molecule poses some c4 axis okay understand now uh, in a molecule you can have more than one principal axis of symmetry for example if we consider bf3 again so in the previous case we uh, we considered the axis which is bisecting the molecule which is bisecting the molecule and um, that is going through the molecular plane through the boron atom okay and this is c3 but in the same molecule in the bf3 same molecule you can have other axis of symmetry okay so if we again put one two three and now if we have a axis we have some axis like this okay if we rotate what we will get we will get b this f3 will be in the same position but now these two will change their position so f2 will go uh, there and f1 will come here right but the arrangement is same now what is this rotation this rotation is by 180 degree this rotation is by 180 degree so here we have uh 360 by 180 which is 2 and this is called c2 so bf3 molecule poses both c3 and c2 axis okay sorry uh one thing i uh said wrong is this is not principal axis of symmetry but this is uh proper symmetry axis this is called proper symmetry axis now what is principal axis of symmetry so if your molecule contain uh two or more symmetry axis for example bf3 contain c3 as well as c2 then the symmetry axis which is of higher order here it is c3 it is of higher order so that's why this c3 is called principal axis principal axis okay so both c1 c2 and c3 they are proper axis of symmetry but c3 because it is higher order symmetry it is called principal axis of symmetry okay now this is the first first symmetry element principal axis of symmetry is the first symmetry element what is our next symmetry element our next symmetry element is uh, plane of symmetry plane of symmetry okay what is plane of symmetry we can take same molecule bf3 we can take the same molecule and we can have a different option uh, operation here so if this is your molecule now if you place some mirror here if you place some mirror over here you will get a reflection of the molecule like this right and both are same the arrangement is actually same right so we say that this molecule poses 
uh, some uh, plane of symmetry, right? So, in, the, in this case, the plane is actually, yes? Yes. Yeah, so here I am trying to represent like, uh, this is our BF3. Okay, so this BA bond is on the plane of the board and the other uh, fluorine is going below the board and this fluorine is going above, coming above the board. It is, still it is planar, right? What is the problem? Still it is planar. It is planar. There is no problem. Yeah, so I I have drawn uh, this molecule in, in this way because I want to show this symmetry axis. This symmetry axis, if I want to show that it is going through the, through the plane, uh, I mean molecular plane, then I have to draw the molecule like this. If you draw the molecule in this way, so now it is representing all the uh, fluorine atoms are on the board, right? All the fluorine atoms and the boron atom they are on the board. So now the axis will go through the boron atom, but it will also go through the board. And I cannot draw it on the board, right? Because it will go perpendicular to the board. So to show this C3 axis, we have to draw uh, it in such a way. Understand? Okay. So in this case, uh, in this case. Actually, this plane I am uh, drawing here, but the symmetry plane is here, the molecular plane. The molecular plane itself here is the symmetry plane. So for any planar molecule, your uh, molecular plane is the symmetry plane because through that, you can uh, you can take the similar arrangement of the molecule. Now, can you, can you uh, identify whether some other symmetry plane is present in BF3 or not? Can you identify? Except this symmetry plane, can you uh, identify some other symmetry plane is there? BF3, uh, does BF3 molecule contain some other symmetry, uh, symmetry plane? Can you tell? Yeah, sigma V, but uh, through which through which atom or through which bonds uh, the symmetry plane is present? Okay, so uh, you are trying to say is um, so I if I draw it like this, let's say we have this BA3, and if we now have a plane like this, right? So then this part will be the mirror of this part. That's what you are uh, trying to say, right? Okay, so this is called sigma V, that is sigma particle. Why it is called sigma particle, I will tell. But can you tell how many uh, such kind of uh, sigma plane is there? Only one or more than one? Yeah, three. So through every BF, yeah, so through every BF bonds, you have one such uh, symmetry plane, right? Now, uh, we have different nomenclature for these two different symmetry planes. The first, first symmetry, symmetry plane, which is uh, going through the plane of the molecule, is called sigma H or sigma horizontal. Why it is called sigma horizontal? Now, this horizontal or particle, this is with respect to the principal axis of symmetry. If your sigma plane is horizontal or perpendicular, with respect to your uh, principal axis of symmetry in this case c3 then it is called sigma h okay if your sigma plane is perpendicular or horizontal with respect to your principal axis of symmetry both are same perpendicular and horizontal the meaning is same so if it is perpendicular with respect to your principal axis of symmetry then it is called sigma h and if it is parallel or vertical both are same parallel is same as vertical right so if it is vertical or parallel with respect to the principal axis of symmetry then it is called sigma v or sigma particle so can you tell 
uh, how many number of sigma um, horizontal is possible for a particular molecule can you tell for what is what is the max yeah so you can have only one sigma horizontal plane because a molecule will have only one molecular plane right no a molecule can have more than one molecular plane uh, when we consider a three dimensional molecule but there will be only one uh, one sigma horizontal because only one plane can be perpendicular with respect to the c3 axis any other plane you consider that will not be perpendicular right only one perpendicular uh, plane is possible with respect to c3 if you consider any other plane that will not be perpendicular either it will be parallel or it will be some inclined angle but it will not be uh, perpendicular and what will be the number of uh, sigma particle for a particular uh, molecule can you tell okay before that can you tell what what would be the maximum number of uh, let's say you have a Mm, C N axis. For for example, here you have a C three uh, axis and you have also C two axis. So, if you have such situation, for uh, let's say you have some C N as a principal axis and you have also C two axis. So, what would be the maximum number of C two axis in the molecule? Can you tell? Sorry, can you, uh, what what would be the maximum number? Yeah, for in this case it is three. Uh, for uh, this molecule has C three axis, so it has three C two axis. But uh, let's say you have a molecule where you have some C N. Let's say you have uh, C six axis, and you have also C two. So how many number of C two will be there? Hmm. How many number of C two axis maximum number? Three. So it is a shortcut or it is a rule. You can say that if you have n num uh, C n as your principal axis, you will have n number of C two. If there is no C two, that is a different thing. But if you find out one C two, you can be. Uh, it is for sure that there will be a number of c2 there is no confusion okay so if you so you have to find in your question you can uh, have find out like um, what is the point group of a molecule what are the symmetry elements present then there is a shortcut if you can find out uh, the principal axis and then if you can find out uh, one c2 axis you can easily tell there will be a number of c2 axis you don't have to manually find out that you can write it directly that uh, because it has cn as a principal axis and i can find out one c2 so that means it will have n number of c2 similarly sigma vertical if you have uh, n number of c2 axis you will also have n number of sigma particles okay so these are shortcuts so this is about sigma vertical and sigma horizontal now uh, let us talk about the secondary axis of symmetry so we talked about uh, primary axis of symmetry now let us talk about secondary axis of symmetry okay so what is secondary axis of symmetry let's say you have this molecule so this is the um, Okay, let me just write it. So, can you tell what is this projection formula? The name of the projection formula, can you tell? Yeah, so this is Schauhorst. Schauhorst of which molecule? Yeah, this is the Schauhorst representation of ethane molecule. Now, if you uh, rotate this molecule by 120 degree, okay, if you rotate the molecule by 120 degree, you will have some arrangement like this. Uh, you will have some arrangement like this. 
and now now you can see uh, these two molecules are they looking same or different are they looking same they are not looking same right they are not looking same right but what you can do now so let me draw it again here let me draw it and now i can place a mirror over here and i can take a mirror image of the molecule okay so if i take a mirror image of the molecule it will look like this now look at this one and this one are the same are they looking similar they are looking similar right so what i have done here so i first took a um, 120 degree rotation of the molecule through this so the axis is going through the um, two, two carbon atoms so this is our c3 axis it is it is the proper axis of symmetry c3 axis and uh, but this molecule does not contain c3 axis because uh, c3 rotation is not giving the same molecule the molecule is not possessing any c3 axis but we are just taking a c3 rotation and after taking the rotation we are placing a mirror uh, perpendicular to that axis right so this is important you cannot put the mirror anywhere you cannot put the mirror here you have to put the mirror uh, perpendicular to the Mm, axis of rotation okay by doing so we are getting the same molecule and this kind of operation that is uh, a reflection uh, sorry uh, rotation followed by reflection is called roto reflectory ax uh, symmetry so uh, roto reflectory or the secondary axis of rotation and this is represented by s in now how this a is determined so this a is same as the uh, rotation uh, axis that is in this case we are doing a c3 rotation so here the a will be 3 so it is s3 okay so this is s3 so we can write s n as a product of c n into sigma so uh, can you tell this is sigma v or sigma h this sigma h right because it is uh, it is uh, perpendicular with respect to the symmetry axis okay so cn into sigma h will give you sn you can have some other molecules which contain sn i am not going into that uh, let us move on to our next symmetry element and that is the um, point of inversion so what is point of inversion if you have a molecule and if you consider any point in that molecule let's say you have benzene ring you consider a point here and you go to a particular direction for example we go to this direction and come back to the origin and then go to the opposite direction by same distance and if you achieve to a similar point then the molecule is said to uh, have the um, point of inversion of or i and uh, this is not just in one direction but you can go in any direction and you will get the same result okay so benzene molecule contains i similarly if you have this molecule let's say you have this uh yeah this one okay so here if you consider this point and if you so all these have hydrogen atoms so this is the staggered form of the ethylene molecule if you go this side you will get hydrogen if you go similar distance in other side you will get hydrogen Similarly, if you go this side, you will get hydrogen. If you go in opposite side, you will also get hydrogen. And same is the case here. So it has a point of inversion. But 
if you take the same molecule in the eclipsed form you don't have point of inversion because now if you go this direction and then you, if you go in the opposite direction you have no atoms right so how you have to point out the point of inversion you have to go in a certain direction then you you have to come back to the um, origin and you have to go in the opposite direction by same distance if you find if you can find out the same uh, similar um, position or similar point then you will say that uh, the molecule contains point of inversion if not it does not contain point of inversion now the uh, now there is a um, relation between i and s2 so whatever is i the same is s2 okay so s2 is the product of c2 and uh, sigma h so this molecule because uh, it is it is containing i that means it will also contain s2 it is for sure you can do it by yourself but uh, you don't need to because as it contains i it will have s2 you can just take a, a rotation by 180 degree and then you can take a reflection you will get the same arrangement of the molecule you can do it by yourself but i will show this relationship through a mathematical tool through a cartesian coordinate system and that is more convincing because that is a general uh, general picture okay so to uh, prove the equivalence of i and s2 we have to take a cartesian coordinate system so this is our cartesian coordinate system this is our uh, z axis this is our x axis this is our y axis we take a point here let's say the point is p and the coordinate is x y and z now if you uh, do some operation i on point p what will be that point so which point will get by an operation of i that is point of inversion on point p can you tell what will be point uh, let's say that point is q so what will be the coordinate of q if we do a operation of i on p yes so that will be somewhere here right and it is it is let's say q so that is minus x minus y minus z now so this is so operation of i on this point p is giving us a point q here now just leave it and uh, do some other thing so now uh, we want to do some operation c2 on the point p and that will be through the z axis so the z axis will be fixed and we will do a c2 operation so what will be the coordinate of that point so let's say that point is uh, p dash let's say so here you will have the point and the coordinate will be what will be the coordinate Yeah, minus x minus y and z so z will be uh, plus because it is in the same coordinate but x and y coordinate will change because we are rotating through the z axis now so ideally the point will be somewhere here because yeah so distance will be same so now can if you take a, a reflection if you take a reflection of point q dash through the x y uh, plane so this is our xy plane and this is also perpendicular to the z axis so if we take a reflection of the q dash point which point we will get and that is same as q right that is same right so this is this is telling us that operation of i on point p is giving giving the same result by the operation of c2 and this is sigma h this is nothing nothing but sigma h so this is the product of c2 and sigma h that is s2 so this system uh, is telling us that operation of i and uh, s2 on a particular point is giving us the same result and that's why i and s2 are actually equivalent 
right so we can say that i and s2 are equivalent now i will uh, discuss some molecules and their uh, symmetry elements so um, our first molecule is let's say acetylene so first tell me what is the principal axis here for acetylene molecule what is the principal axis c2 okay c2 so all are agreeing with that or uh, anyone have some yes yes c infinity because so how see in 3d is coming so if you if you uh, rotate the molecule through the molecular axis by any degree you will get the same arrangement right so here actually we are we can uh, divide c360 by 0 because 0 degree rotation will give you the same result or any kind of rotation will give you the same result so that's why we call it c infinity so c infinity means you can have uh, infinity number of rotation uh, through uh, sorry you can have infinity number of similar arrangement of the molecule by that rotation right so c, c uh, this is the implication of c infinity okay what is the physical significance c infinity means you can have infinite infinite number of uh, um, arrangement of the same uh, uh, infinite number of same arrangement of the molecule by that particular axis so what other uh, symmetry axis present in the molecule can you tell what other symmetry axis present i is also present because if you go this side and if you go this side you will get the same management so we have c infinity then we have i what else yes very good so infinite so we have one c2 axis we have one c2 axis and that means we can have infinite number of c2 axis right so can you tell uh, through who, uh, through which point the c2 axis is actually going so we can have a c2 axis from here we can have here we can have here so there is infinite number of c2 axis right so infinite number of c2 axis anything else infinite number of sigma v anything else sigma h is also present so these are the symmetry and one thing you are missing one another thing you are missing so i is equivalent to what yes so s2 is also present so although i2 is equivalent to s s2 but if uh, you you are asked a question that uh, which symmetry elements are present you have to mention it right now these are the symmetry elements present in a molecule like uh, as acetyl uh, what about hcn this is same similar like acetylene but um, slightly different what about acetylene what are the symmetry elements present here can you just list it can you tell for hcn So C infinity is there, C infinity is there, then uh, C2 is there, C2 is not there, then Sigma V, yes, so infinite number of Sigma V and Sigma H, Sigma H is there. Sigma H is uh, 
what about s s is not there right i is not there so s is not there so only c infinity and uh, sigma v anything else anything else anything except that anything is present not right now you can have you can have uh, infinite number of molecules and for all that molecules you can have this different uh, symmetry element so it is sigma h is not there how sigma h can be there the two sides are not equivalent right molecular plane molecular plane is here C, sigma v because that is uh, that is parallel with the principal axis of symmetry here the molecular plane is this and it is parallel to the um, c infinity so it is sigma v not sigma h for sigma h it should be perpendicular right the condition for sigma h is it is called sigma horizontal that is perpendicular right okay so yeah till yeah so yeah so this is our acetylene and we have sigma h like this so we have a plane and this side and this side are equivalent so now this is our c infinity so this plane is also perpendicular to sigma infinity right the c here the sigma h is bisecting the molecule uh, it is um, dividing the molecule in two halves but here the sigma plane is uh, through the molecular axis not perpendicular to the molecular axis understood yeah. so uh, there can be a lot of symmetry elements present in a particular molecule and it is impossible for us to uh, to list down all this thing so for that uh, there is a system called point group Okay, so molecules are classified in different point groups based on whatever symmetry elements present in that molecule okay and uh, there is a hierarchy rule for uh, selecting the point group for a molecule and you can find out in any book okay so um, first so first few rules are very simple that if you have only c1 axis and nothing else it will fall into the c1 point group then if you have only cn and nothing else it will fall into the cn point group if you if you have only sigma plane and no uh, axis of symmetry then it will uh, fall into c uh, sorry c um, s point group all these things so uh, very few molecules fall into this category majority of the molecule fall into the normal point groups and uh, that we will uh, discuss now so let's so uh, uh, first find out uh, uh, a very simple example that is bf3 so in bf3 we have seen that it has c so c1 is present in any molecule right because it is uh, if you consider any molecule and if you rotate by 360 degree you will always get the same arrangement so c1 is a universal symmetry element and it is present in any molecule uh, now except c1 bf3 also has c3 uh, then uh, 3 c2 and uh, sigma h sigma h and also 3 sigma v okay so to determine the point group of this molecule what is the rule so the rule is if a molecule has a uh, cn and sigma h the point group will be cnh okay it's simple if a molecule has cn and it also has sigma h then the point group will be cnh now let's say you have a molecule where you have cn but you don't have C, uh, you don't have sigma h rather you uh, you have sigma v for example this hcn molecule here you have cn and that is c infinity and you only have sigma v so here the point group will be c infinity v right understand so this is the rule if you have cn and sigma h then the point group will be cnh if you have cn and only sigma v 
and no sigma h then the point group will be c uh, n v okay it is c n v here the n is actually infinity so it is c infinity v now note that here we have c v but because c uh, sorry sigma v but because sigma h is also present the presence of sigma v here is suppressed okay so when we have sigma h the c v will not get priority but c, sigma uh, so, sorry sigma uh, v will not get priority but sigma h will only get the priority this is the thing but there is another thing and that is uh, there is a plane called sigma dihedral okay sigma d there is a uh, there is a different nomenclature and uh, sometimes the sigma v is also called sigma d what is that condition so before that we have to know about what is called dihedral so dihedral angle is the angle uh, between two planes okay so let's say you have a newman projection formula of a particular uh, molecule like this you have atoms like a b and c and here you have a dashed b and b dash c dashed okay and these two are carbon atoms so if you consider uh, this angle the angle between this a um, c a c and the back c this plane and the angle between the other that is a dashed c c this plane so this particular angle is called dihedral angle okay this is called dihedral angle Similarly, this side you have dihedral angle. So dihedral angle does not have any directional property in both sides. The angle is same, okay? But the angle is basically the angle between uh, two planes. Now, when your molecule has perpendicular C2 axis, so here these C2 axis, they are not simple C2 axis. They are actually perpendicular C2 axis. What is perpendicular C2 axis? If your C2 axis is uh, perpendicular with respect to with respect to your principal axis that is in this case so if I uh, redraw the BF3 molecule this is our BF3 molecule right and this is our principal axis that is C3 and this is our C2 axis okay and you can see they are perpendicular to one another so this C2 axis is not a simple C2 axis but it is perpendicular to the C2 axis and if you consider the sigma planes here so this is one sigma plane this is another sigma plane and you can see these two sigma planes they are creating a dihedral angle right they are creating a dihedral angle okay so when your sigma planes are creating a dihedral angle that sigma plane is actually and that dihedral angle is actually bisected by the uh, c2 axis not only dihedral angle because in in this uh, acid uh, sorry in this in this hcn mole molecule also if you draw the um, uh, c sigma planes they will also make dihedral angles but the difference is that here the dihedral angle is also bisected by the c2 axis another c2 axis so this c2 axis is bisecting the dihedral angle so this condition is only possible when you have uh, sigma plane and you have perpendicular c2 axis so this condition should be there and in this particular situation these sigma planes are not called sigma v but they are called sigma d so you don't have to remember all these things this bisection of this dihedral angle and all these things one thing one simple thing you have to remember is for a molecule where you have some uh, c2 axis and they are perpendicular to the principal axis of symmetry okay so if uh, this condition is present then all the sigma v will be called sigma d so we cannot call this sigma v as sigma v for bf3 because we have to call it sigma d and then the point group nomenclature will be changed so we cannot call it c n uh, h rather we have to call it d n h so 
whenever you have sigma d present in your molecule the c will be replaced by d okay you have to write down d instead of c so first you have to find out whether the c2 is present is not present or not and then you have to find out whether the c2 is perpendicular to the principal axis or not if it is perpendicular then you have to write down sigma d instead of sigma v okay so the point group of bf3 will be d3 h right understood do you have any question regarding this so by the same logic can you predict or can you say what will be the point group for acetylene what will be the point group hmm c infinity h or d infinity h yeah because here also perpendicular c2 axis right okay now uh, what about the point group of h2o2 in the um, in this form so h2o2 in this form what will be the point group so first uh, let us find out what are the symmetry elements present so we have to find out symmetry elements one by one so which symmetry element you can find in the molecule what is the principal axis of symmetry c2 and uh, um, how it is having c2 or uh, through which point the c2 is going can you tell here right uh, it is um, uh, perpendicular means it is it is uh, um, perpendicular to the molecular plane right yes so c2 is there uh, anything else sigma h is also there why because molecular plane is the symmetric plane yeah yeah so what will be the point group then c2 is very simple right so uh, you can practice uh, several examples uh, from books the last uh, topic which we will discuss here is the point group uh, and the symmetry elements of aline okay so aline is a very interesting molecule this is called aline where you have three unsaturated carbon atom in a row okay this is our aline and to find out the symmetry elements present in aline we have to place it inside a cubic cubic box but uh, before doing that we can find out one symmetry element and that is so uh, in this drawing can you find out what what are the symmetry elements present in the molecule yeah so this is one c2 and if we just point it one two three four then if we do this c2 operation uh, what we will get we will get this molecule right this arrangement we will get uh, these two will change their position so, so here we will have h2 here we will have h1 and here we will have h4 here we will have h3 right so this is one symmetry axis but uh, it is difficult and and what about symmetry planes symmetry symmetry planes are also there one uh, plane is through one plane is like this which is containing these two atoms right the uh, the c3 uh, sorry mm, i just did a mistake yeah so one symmetry plane is like this and in that symmetry plane you have these two atoms uh, it is containing this h1 and h2 and another uh, symmetry plane will be like this 
and that symmetry uh, plane will contain this h4 and h3 right so that means uh, one is through the board the plane of the board and another one is perpendicular to the board right this uh, um, green one this green one is actually on the board the plane of the board the green one is actually the plane of the board and the blue one is perpendicular to the board right okay so these two symmetry planes are there and uh, right now we can say them um, what sigma v or sigma h sigma v right now we will say them sigma v so two sigma v are there now to find out other symmetry uh, axis we have to place the molecule in the cube otherwise it is difficult to visualize them so we have to draw a cube uh, we can we can draw a cube like this okay now let's say we place the molecule here okay so what we will do we will put two hydrogen atoms one here another here two opposite corners and then we have to place the other other two um, atoms other two atoms like so if we place it here the other one will be here and where sorry not here i did a mistake not here but um, here and where can you tell here right but this representation looks not so good so yeah visualization is difficult in this representation so what i will do is i will place uh, one atom here another here okay and then what i can do i can put uh, other here and here mm, is it good i mean is it okay or i have to place it this this position can you help me where i have to put the other atom to uh, make it correct this corner or this corner so until this one right this one okay so we have this h1 h2 and uh, here we have let's say h3 and h4 now we have one symmetry axis through the molecule this one now interestingly you can see if you put other axis through this particular side then also by rotation of uh, 180 degree what you will get this h1 will come here and this h3 will go there right similarly this uh, so, sorry h3 will go there and similarly the h2 will go here and h4 will come here so another c2 axis is present right and also you can have a symmetry plane through this side also okay and if you rotate what you will get this h2 will come here and this h3 will come here similarly this h4 will come here this h1 will come here so by uh, placing the alien in this uh, cube it is easy to visualize the change by this rotation so two more c2 axis we find out and they are perpendicular to the first c2 axis now here interestingly so i uh, at the uh, at the beginning of the lecture i have said that if you have more than once uh, print, uh, more than one proper symmetry axis then 
the highest order axis will be the uh, principal axis of symmetry right but here all the three axis are c2 so how you can uh, determine which one is the principal axis of symmetry do you know how you can determine yes so when you have uh, two two axes and uh, they are uh, order is same then you have to find out which one is going through maximum number of atoms so because the first symmetry axis which is this one is going through maximum number of atoms so this is called principal axis so c2 is the principal axis and other two c2 are the uh, secondary axis not secondary but normal axis of symmetry you can say and also now uh, we have perpendicular c2 axis so uh, what we, you will call this sigma plane sigma v or sigma d yeah so you have to call it sigma d so now what will be the point group of this um, allene system what will be the point d to d very good yeah so this is the point group okay so uh, we can stop the lecture here and next lecture in the next lecture we will cover the rest part of the stereochemistry section okay thank you for attending the class if you have any query you can ask welcome welcome okay so we can stop the lecture here thank you for your participation okay good night